This is the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL. And by now you've probably seen about a hundred videos about this phone. I'm gonna talk about something very special about this that I can bet you haven't seen. Apple recently announced the ProRes RAW feature with the iPhone 17 Pro Max. But did you know that the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL can shoot RAW video as well in 12-bit, while the iPhone can only do 10-bit? If you don't know what that means, don't worry, I got you. But what you can guarantee is at the end of this video, we will be comparing both of these RAW videos. Before we get into RAW, everyone's been talking about the open gate, like I said, on the iPhone. What that basically means is you're recording using the entire sensor of the camera. It looks similar to you taking a photo instead of a video because it's not cropped in, which gives you more flexibility to zoom in and move around when you're editing. Now raw video on the other hand records full sensor data. No processing, no compression applied, just straight information from the sensor coming over to the final image. And with the Pixel for example how it really works is it's able to record in two different ISO settings at the same time. So you can record at low ISO to get the detail in your highlights while it records at high ISO to get details in the shadows, combines both those images to give you the best of both worlds of perfect combination. The the icing on the cake is that with the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL and using an external app, which we'll talk about in a second, you actually get access to 12-bit color, which is 67 billion more colors than the 10-bit you're getting on the iPhone 17 Pro Max. Now, all of that sounds amazing. But what's the catch? Because there is one. You need to use a third-party app on the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL, which is available on pretty much every Android. But the hardware on the Google Pixel allows you to really get access to that raw video in 12-bit. The app sucks. The app is really bad. It's called Motion Cam Pro. The UI of this looks like it was made 10 years ago by someone who knows nothing about cameras and usability, but it gets the job done. That's not where the headache stops. The second part of the headache is actually getting the footage off of the device into your editing software. And this isn't as simple as just dragging and dropping it into Resolve. You actually have to go through a few hoops here. You have to use an external software, which is also from Motion Cam, to convert this from a raw format, which DaVinci cannot read, into a DNG format, which DaVinci can read for you to start editing and calibrating your footage. And if you're using a Mac, best of luck, because it's like 10 times harder. Not only that, but the file sizes are so massive that even seven to 10 seconds of recording could be up to three or four GB in storage. It's a lot. With all the nerdy stuff out of the way, I'm gonna hand it over to Asif, who is our colorist and editor behind the scenes to show you exactly how he tackled the 12-bit raw video out of the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL. Hey, so I guess you're stuck with me for the next few minutes. So why not, I'll just start by showing you the difference between Rec 709 footage and raw. So with Rec 709 footage, what you see is what you get. So if I try to manipulate one of these factors, you can actually, you can, but to some extent before the video start to break apart. While with RAW, you can go to the RAW settings and change things like color, temperature, lift, gamma gain whatsoever without the image breaking so fast. So you have much more control after the fact. Not only that, since this is recorded in open gate, as you can see, the Rec 709 is not recorded in open gate. So with the open gate, I can actually crop in and maybe move it around a little bit and adjust my composition after the fact, like after shooting. But anyways, if you are going to import the Google Pixel footage to DaVinci Resolve and you are seeing individual frames instead of a video, like I'm seeing right here, all you have to do is go to frame display mode and hit sequence. And now you can import it as a video. Now jumping straight in, the first thing I noticed is the lack of ISO control. That is pretty disappointing because it's supposed to be raw, if you get what I mean. I also understand because that's just how the dual gain ISO works. Despite that, let's see what we can do. So as you can see, there is already clipping and this is purposely shot that way to see how much we can push and pull. So you can also see in the scopes here, it's gone. The information is gone. So since this is shot raw, I can just lower the gain and try to recover back that information. No matter how much I pull back the gain, it's not doing anything. As you can see, it's just gone. But watch this. I'm going to pull back the gain as much as I want and hit this and bam look at how much it opened up like even in the scopes like you know what even the highlight roll off is looking awesome here like look at that so here's another challenging shot harsh backlights dark shadows and everything again highlight recovery as you can see helps a lot 
Look at the scopes. Just look at the scopes of what it's doing. Insane. Now, if we compare the footage to the one from the iPhone 17 Pro Max, as you can see, the one in the iPhone is much sharper. And not only that, I feel like it's much easier to get cleaner whites and blacks. Just look at the table, how clean the whites and blacks are compared to the one from the Pixel. Of course, you can fix it and resolve, but with the iPhone, it's much easier to get neutral colors. Now, moving on to much extreme conditions. And I did not expect the Google to handle this because it's just pitch black outside. We just pointed the camera out the window and this is what we got. Yes, I did a little bit of grading just to make it look a little better. But the fact that the Google can handle this is just awesome. And if we compare it with the iPhone, in this situation, the iPhone is less sharper. And this is probably because it has slightly more noise reduction. Also, thanks to the 12-bit colors, I can really push and pull with the colors without breaking it. And even with heavy grading, as you can see, it is just handling it like a champ. So overall, I'm surprised on how the Pixel can produce these kind of footage. But the thing I value most is workflow. And the whole point of shooting with a phone, in my opinion, is to be quick. And the fact that I have to use a software to render the footage and then import it, it, it just negates the whole point for me. But is it cool? Heck yeah, it is. Now you may be wondering and asking yourself, really, so who is actually going to be spending so much time doing this? And the answer is true filmmakers who want to get the best out of the hardware that these brands are giving us, but really utilizing it to the best possible potential. Because some of these features like raw video and open gear, for example, are not even possible with professional cameras like the Sony a7S III or the ZV-1 or even the FX3, where you're allowed to shoot using the full sensor. Those don't have it, but these phones that fit in our pocket have it. Now, I promised you in the beginning of this video that we are going to compare it to the iPhone 78 Pro Max in terms of the footage. This is what it looks like side by side, both recorded in 10-bit on the iPhone 17 Pro Max and 12-bit on the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL. And that right there is the most niche use case of the Google Pixel 10 Pro XL, where it's capable of shooting raw video in 12-bit. Let me know in the comments if any of you actually would be using something like this. And is this something you even knew that existed in a device like that? I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys again in the next video. Until then, take care, keep doing what you do.